Once you've created those openings that would allow him to come forward towards you, if he doesn't, then he's just as ineligible as the, the other 50 guys that have nothing going on. He's ineligible. He's, just as he's ineligible. He's unattractive at that point because he's not coming towards you. As a woman, I think don't like... I wish I could just impress upon the point because our lives would be so much happier if we would only stop and settle with the man who shows us the kind of passionate uh, pursuit yeah. in order to be in our lives. That is the kind of man that you want to settle with. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Introspect Club, a club where you can learn a lot about yourself through conversations with other people. My name is Jeff Demise, and I'll be your host. We have, as always, a very special guest with us today. We're going to talk about something that is always a popular conversation online, I see, and it's not always the healthiest. Um, we're talking about masculinity and femininity. There's always this duality. I always see online men and women always talking crap about each other. They're always saying the most negative things. They always seem they always seem to be at odds, and there's not any continuity in the conversation, as well as an understanding as to why men and women aren't really getting along the way that we would think they would, given that there's a necessity for both of us on this planet. So I brought somebody along who is very, very passionate about this particular subject. Allow me to introduce Andrea, the femininity, the femininity empowerment coach. Andrea, welcome to the conversation. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm excited. <laughs> Can't wait to talk about it. My thing. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> This is like the Oprah Oprah introduction. That's oh what this is. Oh my god, she's here! Oh my god! I know. You get a rose. Cancer, you get a rose. You get I, a uh, rose. I, so I know it's exciting. I know, but um, yeah, hi everyone. I'm really excited to talk about what I like talking about for a whole like hour. So, <laughs> so give us an idea of who you are and what your mission is. So my mission is just to, because I speak primarily to women, to give women the tools that they need to be able to live in a way that is not only easiest for them, best for them, but also it benefits everybody else as well. I want women to have the tools to know what it takes to have a healthy uh, relationship, to have a healthy relationship with self, all of that. All of that means that you become a woman that is going to be able to contribute properly in terms of what you are in society. When you're disjointed and you don't operate in your element, you don't, you're giving a fraction of what it is that you can give. Mm, okay. So given all that, there seems to be a need for this in today's marketplace. So in your opinion, what do you think is the state of masculinity, masculinity and femininity in your perspective? You made it. You made a face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I I don't think it's looking that good in in modern Western society. Anyway, that's the, that's what I can speak on the most because this is the kind of that's what I'm part of and this is what I see. I don't think it's looking very good for us. I really don't. Um, I feel as though we're sort of coming further and further away from what nature intended in a way mm, um okay for many different reasons but um yeah i don't think it's looking that good for us and i think the state of our relationships and the, the lack of connection that we have is a reflection of that so explain to me what you're saying nature intended and what is actually going on in your opinion in my opinion like we are born we're biologically not obviously this everybody in the world is on a, on a spectrum of masculine and feminine. But when I say these things, please bear in mind, because a lot of people, you know, when I talk about this stuff, they're like, oh, but some people, okay, yes, I know. What I'm trying to say is that the majority of us, the, the critical mass of hu human beings, male and female, we're, we're kind of wired to operate in, in a way that 
it sort of matches the amount of masculine or feminine within us, whether that most people, they present as masculine. So they're going to be masculine energy dominant. Most mm. people, not all. But anyway, if you're masculine energy dominant, the way that you're wired, the way that your brain works, the way that you perceive things in life is going to differ to somebody who is feminine energy dominant. So how does that, how does that impact what's actually happening today? What do you see people actually doing instead? I just think that we've kind of got, like, people have forgotten that. It's become like some sort of, like, pie in the sky, like a myth. Like, oh, there's no such thing. Either that's one argument. There's no such thing. We're all trying to do the same thing and do it in the same way, which I think really ruins a lot of what is distinct and unique about the gifts that we we each have, you know, masculine and feminine. We both are designed to contribute something different to an overall, uh, you know, way of achieving anything. We're both meant to have something. But when we try and be in each other's lanes, I think this is where it's become like, no one knows what they're doing. <laughs> like, yeah, well, give me give me an idea of like what you, what you have seen because you, you coach women mostly, right? So, okay. g- g- excuse me? Only. Only. Okay, so give me an idea of something that you see women doing that you think is stepping outside of their lane that is hurting them. Behaving like men, like when it comes to whether it's dating, whether it's the way that they approach life, you know, I think this is where it's like when you get down to the fundamentals of it, what is, there's a masculine approach to achievement, there's a masculine approach to creation, and there's a feminine approach. So whether it's dating, for example, a woman going and uh, I was just doing a live about this, actually, a woman taking it upon herself to pursue a man is masculine. It's masculine. And the, there's if you are a masculine woman who wants to be in that role, do it. Enjoy it. Have fun. But my thing is when you have that crossover or uh, cognitive dissonance between a woman who's doing that but wanting a man who's masculine, people are forgetting that those things don't match. Like, it's fine to do it if you know the outcome, but it's like people keep putting tomato in the pot and wanting a carrot soup. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> wait so so when you're okay i, I want to touch on something real quick so yeah. in your mind you're saying that a woman who is pursuing a man what does it what does it look like when a woman is pursuing a man what does that even look like in not your, good in I, my I, no no meaning like what describe to me what it looks like like from the outside a woman pursuing a man <laughs> what does that look like it looks like a woman well on the very basic level seeing a man and going up to him and approaching him and saying you know i i wanted to talk to you i want to get to know you so that is on a really basic level but it also looks like women initiating like contact with a man you know being the the the, the force that is driving the interaction that's pursuing like if you're the one if you are the engine behind the interaction you are pursuing so whether that you could be it, talking to try and talk to him, could be you planning or trying to push him to see you. It could be any number of things, but it's just about where the where the driving force between or in the pace of the interaction is coming from. And in my opinion, if you want a certain dynamic in your relationship, you want to be in your feminine. You can't be that engine driving it forward. Mm. So basically, you're saying that the idea of a woman being intentional about pursuing a guy in a similar way that a guy would pursue a woman is problematic. Now, do you see a lot of that happening? Like, is that really going on? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going on. Like, a lot of dating dating coaches and things like that kind of say that that kind of thing is a good way to go. And the thing is, it's okay. Listen, do that if you want, but don't do it if you want a certain dynamic within your relationship. That's what I'm, I want people to understand. There's a difference. Like, yeah, you might get a guy that way, yeah, it might work, but the chances are it's not going to be the kind of man that you actually want. You might not be happy in that kind of relationship because you started it out taking up a masculine role. Well, so don't do it. You don't want to be in, ma- in a relationship where you feel like you're in a masculine role. Do you feel like there's a feminine way to get the right guy's attention? Yeah. Okay. Like, of Talk course, to like at the end of the day, it's not to say that you can't like open up the door you know, it's nice to like create some space, create an opening that would allow him to speak to you, you know, like it can be something as simple and easy as literally saying, excuse me, like I'm kind of lost. Like, 
do you know the way to get to blah 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 or excuse me do you have the time please you know (laughs) you know what's what's crazy you know what's crazy it's like and this is me just with my ignorant brain speaking you have you have a very strong british accent so you're in the uk right yeah so when i hear you speak that way if you think of any like uh traditional historic movie right <laughs> there's like a british accent excuse me madam oh, excuse God. me so i'm so i'm picturing like the victorian times where women oh, were like God. dropping their handkerchiefs like Do I oh, Victoria? you're not I at mean- all you are not i'm just saying like you're speaking to you're speaking to a a an experience that a lot of people aren't having but that a yeah. lot of people in 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 previous generations had so that's what comes to mind so when you're talking about some a woman making herself you know vulnerable in some sense that's what used to happen a woman be like oh i dropped my handkerchief oh please do kindly so on and so forth and a a guy would be like oh why why ma'am but i don't see a lot of women doing that today like that it doesn't look no. that way and i think a lot of women I'll be, and i'll be honest with you there are, there are, there's a population of women who might be offended to say that mm. they have to exhibit this false sense of like vulnerability um mm. in order to get a man's attention what do you mm. how do you feel about that i feel like crack on honey if what you're doing <laughs> is working for you crack on most women, the thing is <laughs> crack on if it's working for you excellent keep going okay but what i'm trying to say is that a lot of these women who say they're so offended are not getting the kind of men they're not getting the attention of the kind of men and that they would like and they're not being treated the way that they would like so, so something's got to give here is it your pride that you're going to put to the side okay. or are you going to keep continuing to attract men that think you've got it all and you, they don't you don't need any help so mm. what's it going to be what's more important so here's what here's what I'll say to that, right? Because there are coaches, yes, that do preach to women that you have to be a little bit more intentional and more active in, in pursuing the guy you want. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of on the fence with the idea on both ends of the court, right? Because there's advantages and disadvantages to both. To your point, you're saying, you know, just make yourself uh, uh, available and visible to the man you want and then hope that that person, um, you know, pursues you but in today's environment there's a little bit of a challenge right the challenge is twofold in one way the challenge is that the type of man that a lot of these women might want are going to be not always in their circle or Mm -hmm. in their environment Mm -hmm. and even if they were the man is potentially going to be a this is just me hypothetically speaking, that man is potentially going to be highly distracted, right? I've been in Mm -hmm. a lot of situations where a woman that I, uh, later on in life told me like, Oh, they had a huge crush on me or they, they were trying to get my attention and they were always around, but me, I'm just not Mm -hmm. even, not that I didn't think they were attractive. It's just, I was always occupied with stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. Someone like myself or a lot of people that would be considered, you know, someone that's considered desirable in whatever way, right? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 challenge number one. Um, challenge number two is that women who sit back and wait for the right guy to approach them are often bombarded with attention from guys that they don't want. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the guy that they do want might not for the reasons I said earlier, it might not always come to their, you know, presence. Right. So even the most highly desirable woman will, if she, you know, if she's not in the right spaces, won't come around the kind of guys that she wants. So she's forced to keep shutting down all these, you know, loser guys that she's not into. And then she's like that guy over there, he won't, he, I need him to come and talk to me. Or mm-hmm. the guy that's, you know, that I see on my phone here, I need him to come and talk. To him. I'm just going to be available and hopefully he sees me. So a lot of these women who are highly desirable feel like they have a lot to offer. They're not necessarily making themselves presentable to the right person in given the distractions that exist in today's time. Because a guy is going to have a ton of distractions even on his phone, let alone in person. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you feel about that? 
Well, for me, none of that is really anything to be concerned about okay. because, you know, as a woman, you've got to think, what is it? What's your priority here? Do you just want a guy? Do you just want a guy like some guy? Some guy? Or do you want a man really interested in you? Okay. And for me, it's a no brainer. I think any woman with a certain amount of self-respect would rather be single than have a man that's only halfway interested. Okay. You know, if you as a woman, there's nothing that really inspires men much more than women. I'm sorry. People okay. can say that it's this, that it's that, but nothing really other than like a man on his purpose and women, like mm. his goals and women. And when he reaches <laughs> his goals, the first thing he wants is women. Why does he want his goals? For women. Like, you know what I mean? So if that's not It's like we're only wired to work as long as there are women around. <laughs> that's it if the whole world if women went from this world and it was just men men would have a really hard time achieving anything whereas women on the other hand we're not so driven by the need to impress men in that way we want to impress them in other ways but not when it comes to like our achievement so that you know it's we're just different like that that's fine but what i'm trying to um, make women understand is that it, it doesn't matter whether a hundred guys are interested in you and you are interested in that guy if that guy is not interested in you then he is just as ineligible as all the no, other men. It's not, it's, not no, a matter, it's not a matter of the guy not being interested. It's a matter of the guy not being aware of your existence to yeah. begin with. But that's why I say be in the, be, put yourself in a space. It's like you can't expect people to drop from the sky Got and it. find you. You have to create opportunity in life, period. Whatever okay. it is that you want, create opportunity. Now, that can be something as simple as getting on online dating. I'm not telling women to fly to Timbuktu. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Just make yourself present and allow people to find you. Create opportunities. If you want a certain type of man that's interested in this or that, be in spaces where people are talking about this or that. You know, make yourself, in like, be realistic in that way. But at the same time, once you've created a space, once you've created those openings that would allow him to come forward towards you, if he doesn't, then he's just as ineligible as the other 50 guys that have nothing going on. He's ineligible. He's, just as he's ineligible. He's unattractive at that point because he's not coming towards you. As a woman, I think don't, like... I wish I could just impress upon the point because our lives would be so much happier if we would only stop and settle with the man who shows us the kind of passionate uh, pursuit yeah. in order to be in our lives. That is the kind of man that you want to settle with. And there are many other things in play, but without that kind of passion for, you know, being with you to talk to you, you're going to end up with like a really miserable kind of, some people can deal with it. I don't know. Some people can handle that. But I'm saying a lot of women, I, I just believe that most of us, it's not good for you. Eventually, you will be upset in some way because you drove it forward. Okay. That's not the natural position for you as a feminine woman. All right. You're not getting the best man for the job if you do that. So let so I'll give you I'll give you a scenario. Let's let's do let's do a role play session. All right. All right. Let's say I'm at a <laughs> give me an idea of a place that you feel you would find a, a highly desirable man. Anywhere, a, a nice gym. A gym, okay. Let's do. All right, let's do gym. I like that. So <laughs> let's say you had a good gym, right? One of the nice ones, per se, right? You had a good gym, and you you notice me because I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at. So we're at the gym, right? And right. you know that I go there regularly. We bump we bump into each other, not like actively like engaging, but. Like we cross paths, whatever. I got my headphones on as I do now and I'm going inside the gym and I'm going there to work out and I'm in and I'm out, right? No, no funny business. I just work out, pump out and leave. How do you, right, Andrea, how do you get my attention in a feminine way without seem, seeming too masculine? Now I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm doing my bench press, whatever the hell it is. What's going on? Can you spot me? Okay, I spot you. I mean, yeah, and if you if you do that for me and I thank you and you move on, I don't want you. <laughs> so you're saying, okay, so you're saying any woman at the gym that asks a man to spot her it doesn't no. genuinely want okay. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that if during my interaction, if if I open up the pathway for you to to talk to me, and you don't, 
you're not interested. So why would I bother myself with you? I got you. But is it safe to assume that a woman who asks a man to spot her at the gym, that's a move that she's making towards that man? Yeah, if you want. Sure. So, why not? If you're feeling as though that in that moment, but this is where it's like, come on, we're, we're not... Uh, we have also the power of deduction. We have the power of intuition. We can feel people's energy. Okay. You can sense when somebody wants to perhaps uh, have a conversation with you or is open to that. Okay. So, if, so if I said, can you spot me? I put my headphones back in, do my workout and said, thanks, turned away from you. That's somebody who's not really opening the doorway got for it, an actual conversation. It. If got you it. do it for me and I say, oh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's really hard sometimes. I really want to work out, but I keep asking people they put their headphones in and I don't know what to say. So this is somebody it's like, do you know what I mean? You can sense that there's a bit of an opening there. Got if it, that got opening it. comes and the man doesn't take it, fine. No problem. But I'm, what I'm trying to dissuade women from is going up to men with that kind of masculine way. Just open the door. Just talk. Just ask a question. You know what's crazy? That's all you need to do. Even, even what you just said, and, and I and I like what you said. I think it's, I think it's a, a sweet, innocent way of like, you know, being engaging without being too like yeah. forward and too like embarrassingly That's desperate. I, and I get it and I respect it, but I'll be honest with you, even that and what you said requires a certain level of confidence that I, I think a lot of women don't have. Right. Yeah, I don't but think they can, practice. they can what? They can practice. Yes. Yes. But, but even that comes with a lot of fear because even women will walk into a gym, they see a guy that he likes and she'll, she'll, she'll probably, uh, talk herself out of it like oh he's probably this he's probably that oh i, I don't look as good as i should or this that and third so there's a lot of things that go on to women's mind that might prevent them from doing that so with that said you 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 mentioning like these very feminine these traditional feminine uh acts or or, or behaviors how do you feel about women who might have an opposing view such as Feminist. How do you feel about feminism? I don't feel much because I feel as though you do what you want to do. If you may, if you are happy, okay, do what you want. However, for, for me, that doesn't align with my way of thinking because uh, at least not what feminism has become. That doesn't line up with my way of thinking. What do you mean? What I has it? What has it become? Because now what, what was it's it before, divisive. and what what was it before, and what what has it become? It was about you know women wanting to be able to do basic things like own property, go into the workplace. You know, I think anyone with a brain would not oppose something like that, you know, but when we start going into wanting female superiority, mm. um, to me, it's just, you're going backwards again. You know, I really love the fact that I'm a woman and that I get the privileges that I get. And I think that if more women understood those privileges, they wouldn't be so upset because um, feeling as though they're, they're missing so much. What, you know, what do you mean? What, what privileges? You know, just being a woman. Obviously, there's a lot that is not a privilege when it comes to being a woman. But the way that I, well, I'm treated, the way that I'm treated by men in my life, you know, I get to be taken care of in, in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when a man comes into my life, he takes on a role in which it's very, it's very nice for me, I've, you know, protective and things like that. You know, I don't have some of the pressures that uh, men do. Mm -hmm. I have my own pressures and I have my own problems as a woman. Sure. And there are many. I'm not trying to downplay that. But I'm just saying they're different. Mm. And I understand the difference between it. And, um, you know, I appreciate the ways in which uh, I'm able to, to navigate through the world as a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I appreciate that. And I, um, I just think that a lot of... The, the what, what has now been called feminism is, like I said, to do with women just taking over or like being superior. And, you know, and for me, I just feel as though my aim is for I want my aim is for men and women to be cohesive, not to be separate entities struggling, struggling for dominance over one another. Mm. Did you ever have any personal experience in this in what we're talking about? that kind of contributed to why you're passionate about this entire conversation? Yeah, I think quite often people always have some sort of personal something because 
it's the selfishness of human humanity really it's quite amazing because you can either use something that's uh, been relevant to you or hurt you in the past and then just become mean or it makes you want to change it so it's it's a fork in the road but yeah absolutely like you know i i watched so many family members and, and my own mother go through becoming masculine as mm. a result of having to take on things that wasn't it wasn't her position to take on and choosing the wrong people mm. and how that changes how that changes you as a woman mm. and how you become and how it's not good for you you know i've seen that in people in my family i've seen it in my mother i myself i've had uh, relationships that were not right for me and that caused me pain because i didn't know what to look for what would be a safe person to uh, partner with mm. i just wasn't aware of some of the things that i'm aware of now when i did become aware i was like right this is basic stuff that if all women just understood these few basic things about men about themselves you wouldn't see a lot of the things that that we see about you know relationships and da, 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 da. you know it's really quite simple so these experiences that you had specifically with your mom or your family did did that by itself create an impact on you in particular about how you came up in the world like so what happened what do you think happened to you in that process Gosh, yeah i mean the thing is you know when my mum because of my dad had uh, alcoholism so mm. it just meant that for most of my childhood it was my mum doing everything so she became very stressed tense most of my childhood i felt like this burden do you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and why because my mum's doing the job of at least two people. Mm. She's struggling, so she doesn't have patience. Mm. So all of the softness that you want and, and need from a mother, mm. I didn't get. Uh. And like, you get what I mean? It's like, we. there's a reason why I believe that it, you need a man and a woman. Our approaches to parenting are different. And women, we are designed to naturally provide that soft cushion, whereas the man is going to be a little bit more, you know, regimented or uh, disciplined. Yeah, Not yeah. to say women... It's just a different approach, you know? Right. And so when you a woman taking on both, what you get is somebody who's very burnt out. Mm. And I know what that looks like. I know how women become when they're in that, you know? Mm. And I know that the fallout, whether that's in to their children, to the people they know in their relationships, it's just such a, and it's so avoidable. Mm. So avoidable. So do you, so do you now like take all of that experience and do you kind of like share that with some of the clients that you kind of coach? Most definitely. So do you, can, yeah, with my, sorry, go on. Can you share like some examples of like, like an extreme scenario that your client without mentioning any names, um, an extreme example that your client experienced where you were able to kind of shed some light and shift their entire world with how you coach them? Yeah, so I'll just be brief. So one of my clients, like one of my best clients, she has had many situations, you know, with a difficult and traumatic, um, I guess, childhood. And that then led into many things that have happened with her in terms of her relationships. Mm -hmm. And she had a um, an ex that actually she found out was swinging both ways shall we say and it mm. broke her completely completely um and as a result of that you know the way that she felt as a woman and the damage that that the toll that that took on her and her femininity was huge you know she's finding it so hard to feel feminine after something like that because it, it was almost like she felt as though she had been the man in that relationship and finding that out was the final blow so we've really? worked together for a long time and um and actually now she's doing so much better. She's speaking, uh, coming up to like an engagement with somebody who is amazing for her. So it's a real turnaround. But, you know, for me, that was all her. I help in the sense that I, I allow people to see an alternative viewpoint. If you never have heard or have never had somebody tell you that it actually it's not normal what you've seen growing up, that's yeah. actually not normal. You don't have to do it that way. You don't have that's to true. move towards men. You don't have to try and fix men. You don't have to be the one always giving. Mm. Just somebody showing up and telling them that and being and making sure that they're accountable for how they're behaving changes everything. It literally changes your life. It did for me and it's, it's done for her. So in her particular scenario, is there a reason why she took her partner being 
by for every sense of the word personally like it was a per like as if it was a personal attack on her femininity uh, do you know what it is i think it's, it's a culmination of, of so much trauma in the sense of how she's been treated by family uh, other relationships and also the way that she was treated in that relationship always being the mule always just everything piled on her like mm. always her with the onus to do more to change to be this to be that and i think that when you also remember that you have selected this person this is somebody that you let in okay that's why you know nobody can come into your life without you having a hand in that and mm. that's why yes your partner choice is so personal mm. very much so. you know we don't get to just you know play the victim we don't get to do that because there are many things in life life will push you around you know illnesses come and blah 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 blah, blah. but when it comes to your partner choice we have a hand in that and so you can't ignore the fact that you there was something about you that created this whole situation and i think that recognize that that recognition is a hard pill to swallow for anyone you know it, when you're talking about picking the right partner and uh, i think a lot of what you're saying there's a lot of value in it for a lot of people especially if they are looking for something very um you know traditional as well as something that speaks to what you would consider their masculine or feminine um, nature, right? But I think where a lot of the struggle happens is there's a lot of narrative out there online that are making people very angry hmm. and very misinformed and yeah. a little misguided because a lot of content that I see online, right? I see a lot of women talking really bad about men. So why do you think that's happening? We're hurt. Everybody's hurt. Everybody. But what everybody is failing to see is that, you see, when you're seeing a lot of something in your life that is unpleasant from the opposite sex, it means that there's something off with you. Mm. Okay. That's it. So, so, you, think, so you think everybody everybody's exerting, like if a woman is talking bad about a man or about men, online is because she herself is hurt and if a man is talking bad about women online is he himself is hurt in some capacity is that what you're explaining it's pain 100 percent. and it's not to say that you know people don't have a right to vent absolutely crack on but at the same time just understand that if you are seeing a repetition of a certain type of character in your life that you don't like that's treating you badly it's a surefire sign that you need to look in the mirror and figure out something because what you seem to want isn't what's materializing. So there's something that's amiss. The way you're presenting yourself, the, what you're thinking, you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Something's amiss. Mm. No, that's a good point. And, and I've seen that in a lot of content. I'm like, I'm, I'm reading between the lines of like what some of these ladies are saying about men and what some of these men are saying about women. I'm like, like you guys are broken. Like, like who hurt you? That's my, that's my first yeah. statement. I'm like, who hurt you? Like you're so right. Some, somebody hurt you. Can, can we discuss it? Uh, let's get on this podcast and let's talk about it. Uh, you know what I mean? But, um, but I do, but I do. I, I mean, um, I, I mean, I've had conversations with people and I have upcoming episodes, um, where I speak to people who are explaining the hurt that they had and, and why and what impact you know it had on how they moved through the world and I've I, I've met those people through and through but I see more of it outside of me than mm. ever before um, mm. and 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 also how it affects people and how they view relationships in general when they are in a relationship because sometimes people enter relationships with this idea. Even because I've been in a relationship before where I'll, I'll, you know, I'll spill the beans on me. Like I've had uh, a relationship with a woman before who deliberately s explains over and over how much she hates men. I'm like, what am I doing here? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it was, and it was very evident that like there was a, there's a, a continuous uh, a messaging that she was either receiving or experiencing that even mm -hmm. the people that are in relationships carry that hurt into those relationships and might not even know it. Um, yeah. so that's, that's a big deal. So I, I'm just yeah. trying to imagine how people even enter into marriage with <laughs> how, what, what, what are your views on marriage as a whole, as far as like what, what, what you think of it and what you think it is going on in this environment when it comes to marriage. I don't 
No, you know what? With marriage, sorry, my eyeball, it's so typical. We're trying to shoot something and my contact lens wants to start acting up, honestly. Anyway, just say, yeah, just, say, just say you're being like extremely emotional. You're just trying to wipe the tears. Yeah. I have that effect on people. Me, you know what I mean? You haven't made me cry just yet, love. We'll All try right. harder. All right. <laughs> Mich- challenge accepted. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, I think marriage is a great idea. I think really what marriage will do is force you to be the highest version of yourself because of everything that you have to learn in order to have a successful partnership. So I do, I get it as a concept. I think it's fantastic, but I just think that people must know what it is, you know, that they're signing up for. And it's not like a fairy tale walk into the sunset. You can love somebody, but just know that all relationships take effort. You know what I mean? Okay. So I think that, yeah, there's a problem there with like what people want it to be. People don't really want to have to try. If they start having to try, they feel like it's failing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. that's a good point. Like, and I, and I'm, I've had this, uh, this conflict with, the the concept where like because marriage marriage say people say that marriage is is uh uh you know a true sign that you know you're you want to be with this person but also marriage is also the very vehicle that also makes people stop trying mm. you see what mm. i mean and it's this this yeah. conflict where it's like well i have i you know we're we're each other's person so you're going to be here forever I'm going to be here forever. So, and you, you say these vows and you say, uh, for better or for worse, I'm here. So people think they can just exhibit the worst and the person's going to be here. If you think about what you're really saying. Right. And I think that's the challenge that, that exists. Um, do you, do you feel like that is part of what is occurring in today's environment or. I think you're spot on there. I do. I think you're spot on, you know, but I also think people like people forget that there's no such thing as like anything can change at the drop of a hat. Like we think we know people, we think things are forever. We think, you know what I mean? And we have kind of take that for granted. But I think the minute, the minute that you start thinking that you've got someone in the bag is the minute that you're slipping into an illusion because mm. anyone can up and leave you at any minute. And remembering that it will keep you on your toes. So how do you, how does someone remember that when they're making vows saying that I'll love you unconditionally? Because you've got to remember this is a human being. They're not a, <laughs> like you're still a person with your own thoughts and your secret world that I'll never, ever know. There's always so much more than what you think, you know, like you're a human being. That means that there's always going to be a part of you that I will never, ever know. And I cannot own you. I cannot own you because of it's impossible. You're a human being, you know? You know, I... I I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate the the fact that that's the response you gave because at first when you said, you know, you know, you think marriage is a good thing and so on and so forth, whenever people say that and particularly when I, I hear ladies talk about marriage, uh, there's always this illusion um, mm-hmm. that when you're married, all problems are solved, right? Mm-hmm. And... And a lot of men don't see it that way, right? Yeah. A lot of men are, are are fearful of marriage, right? For a multitude of reasons, and one of the reasons is you don't necessarily know what you're going to get on the other end of the on the other mm. side of the fence, right? And you're signing up for this thing that you're sacrificing for because it, it is a sacrifice, um, and the fact that you are consciously aware that you are with someone that is a human being that is a constant change at least tells me that that awareness will allow you to at least know that you might have to do some work to maintain it whereas some people are like i'm marrying this person this is the person i want for the rest of my life when in reality it's not you know what i mean and you have to be prepared for that i think what you said is very powerful so i commend you for for having and i think like what, what I wanted to ask you though, what do you think you're sacrificing? As a man? Natu- I don't think men are naturally monogamous. Okay. Yeah, men are not naturally monogamous. And I think also uh, men are, are not naturally compromising. Uh-huh. You see what I mean? So uh, if, uh-huh. you, if you think about the idea of, of you know, typical masculinity a man wants to go his own way do his own thing and don't have to answer to anybody just like in the, in the brunt of it right yeah. obviously there's collaboration yeah. with the world but like if you really think about it what what a lot of people who like 
people who like masculine men also like the ones that are headstrong, they're, they're focused and they're doing their own thing. What comes with marriage and relationship, there's a lot of compromise. There's a lot of adjustment. There's a lot of like, okay, we'll do it your way this time. We'll, you know, this, that, and the third, which it, it takes a lot of, uh, uh, of energy if, if that's not who you naturally were all the time, mm-hmm. especially if you're used to being by yourself and so on and so forth. I was, I was watching, um, this is going to sound really off, but just hear, hear me out. Right. I was, uh, uh, years ago I was, um, taking, I was eating a sandwich at a park. Right. And there were these kids and I was just, wa- I was just looking at these kids. I was just watching these kids run around and play. Right. And I was eating a sandwich and these kids, they were, they belonged to some school where they were having some recess and the kids were like, I don't know, four or five years old or something like that. Right. And I'm watching these kids run around. There's like a lot of noise and, and, the, and the teachers are, are like trying to tend to these kids. But I noticed something, right? All the running around and climbing and, and, and beating on each other and all this rah, rah, rah were all the little boys, right? They're yeah. running around, just, they're independently just, right? Yeah. For the, for the, but for the little girls, they had these little crop circles, they were just mm. sitting under a tree in a circle. There's like three big circles of different <laughs> girls, but the guys are just climbing. They're just hitting each other, then running off and this, that, and a third. So even from the moment that you, you're, you're young, the kind of energy you bring into this world is very different. You have a very different <laughs> independence. So for men, that's one sacrifice. And then if you're looking at the sacrifice of monogamy, I call it a sacrifice because naturally, especially as we evolved Prior to the, you know, uh, uh, the industrial revolution where, you know, we're, we're, we're raising families and doing this, that, and a third, in order for the species to survive, we're designed to inseminate as many women as possible because the chance of survival for any offspring is, was very low back then. So you needed to like inseminate as many po- people as possible. And then a woman had to choose the strongest man to, you know, inseminate and so on and so forth in order to have the strongest offspring to survive, you know, famine predators mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. That's how we were designed. So we're still, we're still wired that way in some capacity, even though we coach ourselves and we socialize ourselves and beca- in order to fit the environment that we're in, because we can't just have mm-hmm. kids. You're all absolutely over. right. But the yeah. thing is, what I would put to you is that actually mon- monogamy doesn't benefit women in the same way that it benefits men. No, I, I agree men, with you. You know what I mean? Women I, actually do worse mentally in lots of yeah. ways when they marry. Men do better. Do you I, know what I mean? It's just men have this cognitive distance that they think they're making this big sacrifice, but actually it's the woman who's making the sacrifice by and large. I agree that's with you. That's why it's important for women to choose the right man because that's the only way they can redress that balance. Yes, I agree with you a thousand percent. There's no disagreement, but a man's not going to go into it with that in mind he's going into yeah. it knowing what he he knows he's used to and what he's giving up in that sense mm-hmm. and it also it doesn't it doesn't help that you know uh you know socially as well as legally a lot of things aren't necessarily in his favor so he's going to steer away from it for a lot of reasons so a lot of men are very particular about just even entering into that mm-hmm. rather than just jumping into it asap huh Interesting. I feel like socially it works in men's favor to be married. Again, the social benefits work better for them. Again, if you look at it from the lens of, okay, if you're a man and you're deciding to get married, right? Mm. Socially, that man is looked at as, okay, you need to do this in order for you to be uh, uh, looked at as as a, a, a viable person on, on the planet, right? Or, mm-hmm. or you need to be responsible for all this. Anything that goes wrong in the relationship, it's your fault. Anything that uh, um, goes, excuse me? <laughs> That's a stretch. Hey, no, I'm, I'm just Anything saying. Anything that, that goes on wrong in the relationship. No, think about, think about it. If a guy, no, think about it. If a, if a, guy, if a guy cheats, right? They're going to say, what an asshole, he cheated. If a woman cheat, the first thing they'll say is, what did he do to entice her to cheat? That's usually, no. I'm just telling who, who, who is they? Anytime, Society. anytime, anytime I've ever had a conversation about a woman doing something wrong in a relationship that falls along the lines of that, the first thing that comes mm-hmm. into play is he must have done something to make her want to do that, right? And I, I even saw it in scenarios, and this is an extreme. There was a social experiment that was done, and I, and I mentioned this on a previous uh, um in a previous uh, uh, episode where there was a social experiment where they had a woman who was walking down the street 
with a guy and they sh- they had the guy being overly aggressive with her like they were a couple but they over- he was being overly aggressive he was being abusive verbally he was kind of grabbing her and shoving her, and people were coming to her aid like oh my god don't do that to her don't do that to her and then they flipped it they brought the guy out with the woman and this time the woman was being super aggressive and beating <laughs> on the guy just literally beating him down and and everybody was laughing at the guy and wasn't really coming to his aid and then when they interviewed the 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 past the people that were passing by and they were saying uh what how come you you laughed at this guy? Why didn't you help? Why didn't you provide any whatever? And a lot of the people said, well, the first thing we thought is he probably deserved it. He probably did something that made her want to do that. That's that's where people's default is. So a lot of men don't feel like they are well represented when when they need something. So that's a sacrifice in itself. You see what mm-hmm. I mean? And nothing that you yeah. said, nothing that you said is wrong. I do. And to your point, I do agree. A lot of men do benefit from healthy, long-term relationships. And a lot of women suffer because they sacrifice a lot on the back end that a lot yeah. of people don't know about. But it's just one of those things where it's not properly communicated and it doesn't always happen that way for a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, that's why it's so important to go into it, you know, with a, you know, Go into it knowing what it is that you want, how yeah. you want to be treated, and then you bypass a lot of that stuff. Yeah. That's why I'm so big on, you know, telling women, right, if you want a certain type of relationship where you're not going to be the mule, you're not going to be taken advantage of, you're not going to be having the kind of man that just piles everything onto you, start as you mean to go on. This is why when you look for a man, look for how interested he is in you, how he values you. Is he chivalrous? Is he caring? Mm. You know, all of that stuff is going to be a predict, uh, is going to predict how he treats you in the future when the stakes are higher. Um, Yeah, I definitely think, though, when it comes to relationships and men and women both have different things in life that are difficult and that that pressure us, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the things that men complain about are a result of having that, like, you want to, men like generally to be perceived as leaders, they like to be perceived as, you know, the heads of whatever it is, they want to compete, they want to dominate, they want this and that. But what a lot of men shirk away from is the responsibility that comes alongside that position. You know, and this is that I don't like that. I just feel as though if you want something and you want to be perceived in a certain way, you want a certain treatment, understand that if you want, like, what's the saying? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mm -hmm. If you want the crown, if you want that position just know that there are things that come along with that and responsibility is not a dirty word we're being men are being raised to think that being responsible is like a huge burden and there's no no joy that comes from that actually being responsible for things gives you a great amount of self-worth and power personal power absolutely absolutely yeah and i I apologize for interrupting you but like when men gain a lot of satisfaction from from being held responsible for, for things yeah. where they want to admit it for, but there's a caveat, right? Yeah. Men expect a certain level of respect, right? Yes. They expect yeah. a certain level of, 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 um, recognition. Like appreciation, for the, recognition exactly. Respect. That a lot of men in today's environment are not getting that's part yes, of the problem. And I think what you're either not providing it, they're not providing what a leader must provide, or they are providing it and they're not getting the kind of everything that you were talking about. Do you know what I mean? Ex- exactly. So, and I think what you're doing is a powerful thing in the sense of you're, you're teaching women, you know, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm assuming you're teaching women how to value their men at the same time, right? Yeah. Showing that appreciation. Whereas I think that will serve both people who want to have these types of relationships. And I think part of the reason why a lot of men struggle is they are told you have to do this. You have to do that. And whether, whether you're rewarded for it or not is, is not important. And that, and I, and I think that's the reason why my men shy away from that kind of responsibility. Whereas in the past it might, it might've been a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Cause at the end of the day, like I was, I was literally saying like, Nothing in life do you get to just take, 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 take and not give. Like the whole point, like we're meant to be together in the sense that we're meant to be helping each other to be better. And we're meant to support that in various ways. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise it just becomes like, like who wants a leech? Who wants someone like the same way a woman doesn't want some guy just on her, providing nothing in her house, eating all her food. The same way a man is not going to want some woman who's just around, like just like some leech and also not providing him even like a, a hug and a thank you baby and a kiss, like just there entitled <laughs> and doing like, 
providing nothing good, you know? It's not fair on both sides. And I wish that instead of us being so upset with one another, we could just understand that, you know, we're different. The things we want are different. There's nothing wrong with the whole point. I want people to think like when you find someone amazing, you should really want to give to them yeah. like, and shout them with all that love and, 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 you know, all of that. What's life without being able to do that? Like if you found something good, you want to feel so free to pour all of that out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the aim. That's the aim that to find somebody who's worthy of that. So now when you talk about finding someone, now people are doing that online, right? Which is, yeah. a, which is a completely different challenge and doesn't, doesn't really lay hand to some of the things that you were telling me that you coach women on is how to make yourself available and so on and so forth. It just creates a different type of struggle. So what I want to do now, I want to, I want to share with you a question that was asked to me from my listeners. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my listeners send me videos and, and, um, and audio clips of themselves asking a question and they want me to have people uh, answer them. You ready? Go for it. All right. So this is the first question. This person's going to remain anonymous, but is also a good friend of mine. Um, <laughs> uh, here we go. I hate making the first move. I like the man to lead and then I reciprocate. But I've heard that with online dating that sometimes a woman should message a man first. And I find it really awkward because I'm more of an in-person type of person. So how do I initiate contact without seeming like awkward or desperate i don't know i just feel like it's just weird i don't know what to say sometimes i just say hi but i don't know or sometimes people don't really write too much in their profile so it's kind of hard to find things to talk about but i just i'm really a mad awkward like typing and like talking to people online that i don't know so i would love advice on that How do you feel about that? Yeah, I just feel as though once you've opened up the lines for communication, you it's not your job to be trying to high and create. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you, you can tell she's already not comfortable. Okay. You know what I mean? Are you forcing it? Like, babe, you don't have to. It's not actually your job. So despite what you may have heard, once you match with somebody, there's an open space there that would allow somebody, like, them, let him come to you. Okay. Let him come to you. So I would say just, you don't have to, babe. You know, don't feel like you have to come up with some witty, that's his job. It's his job. <laughs> that's his job. <laughs> You'll be the witty one. We'll be. It's his job. Bring me the next like, one. Yeah. This one's next. not entertaining enough. <laughs> next, babe. And if he's not coming up with something, you know. <laughs> Just move on. You know, the thing is, what I, what I want women to understand is that as you move through life, you, you have to find a way to filter out men who are not, in, like, they're not interested in you to the degree that you need. It's not want that you need mm -hmm. in order to have a successful partnership. You have to find a way of filtering out those men. So for something like, when, especially with online, because of the amount of, in flow yeah. you have to be quite cut and dry about it yeah. like there's no point of messing around and beating around the bush if a man isn't initiating conversation that's an easy no because really you only want a select group of like really highly interested highly like high quality people that you would even consider anyway mm -hmm. and as you start to have how higher standards for yourself that group gets smaller so don't be dismayed by the fact that you're xing out lots of people because that's your job as a woman yeah that's your job you have to find the criteria for finding the, the best man the man who's not only high quality in, in all the other things going on in his life, the vetting, blah, blah, blah. That's a big thing. But also, it's not good enough that he has all that stuff if he's not highly interested in you. Mm. So the two must be there. So what use is it? He's good looking. He's got a great job. He's really love, like got great interests on his page. That means nothing 
if he's not highly interested in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If women just get that, then they don't have all these internal questions going on because a man will make it very obvious that he's very interested in you. And if he's not, forget all the other stuff. doesn't matter how great you think he is. If he's not coming towards you, forget him. So you're saying women online should never initiate any conversation with a guy? I, I, I don't really see what there is to say. If he's not talking to you, what's there to say? <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a situation which I can't think of why well, you would well, do I'll, it. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, right? So like you've heard of, you've heard of Bumble, right? Oh, that's different because you have to. I got Otherwise you. Otherwise they can't talk to you. I got yeah. you. So on that very platform, it's 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 been said that it's built to empower women to speak first, empower women to to have a voice and not always get bombarded with messages. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The only thing that's good about it, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's not all that stuff. The only thing that is good about Bumble is that it allows you to control the, the inflow. So if I don't speak to you, you can't speak to me. So that means that I'm limiting the amount of crap in my inbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that it's good for that, but it's not about empowering women. It's like, to me, that's all silly. But <laughs> in, in a situation like Bumble... <laughs> It's all what? silly. <laughs> Just it is silly. <laughs> yeah, it's silly. But for Bumble, for example, it, all you have to do, babe, like, hello, hi, what's your name? Smiley face. What's your name? That's I it. would hope his name is on there. What? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> whatever his name is. Hi, John. <laughs> hey, well, John. Hi, what's your name? Because yeah, I didn't it. read it. <laughs> I know, right? Hi, what's your name? How bad? Don't do that. Don't do that. L use his real name, please. Oh, he's like, what's your real uh, name? Yeah, you like, and then a smiley face and let him move from there. Like, don't overthink. Like, you, you don't need to seem really witty and cool. That's his job. Do you, you understand? You know, I'm a little torn, right? Here's why I'm torn, right? Because... Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of uh, women criticize men for not being charming, let alone charming online, right? Yes. And there's this criticism like, oh, I hate when guys send me hey, I, I hate when guys send me hi or hello, like yes. it's just so unoriginal yes. and this, that, yes. and there. And I'm like, okay, but like, mm -hmm. a lot of women don't have anything that is unique about them online that is worth yes. a conversation. They might be good looking and a guy might be attracted, um, yes. but they might not really exhibit any type of hobbies or exhibit any type of yeah. like description. But this is about where it comes in for women. Like how are you conducting yourself online? I'm actually going to give out, I've got a free um, guide. Uh, it's two part guidebook for online dating profiles yeah. coming out it's free download so only one watching just go to my page it's going to be coming out within the next couple of weeks okay. but the point being that when you create your page i think a lot of women forget the fact that you're not giving anyone anything to hold on to hi like create an opening so that put something on there that somebody can see and and use as a way right. to initiate something right. tell me something about you you know so that something they can latch on to yes you know I but for both of us, that's important. So as a woman, that, yeah, it matters how you're, what you say on there it really helps. But at the same time, it's like, men, please understand this. When it comes to, especially online dating, it's a woman's game in the sense, and all dating, if I'm honest, because men that are is, the ones that is who facts. want That is facts. It's facts. It's a woman's game in that way, you know, but yep. it's a man's game in other ways. So understand that when you are coming into a woman's inbox, the reason why a lot of women take umbrage with someone coming in saying, hi, hey, is because they get about 20, 30 of those a day. Okay. Whereas you Some as a man are getting hundreds. one or two, loads of them, you know, so if you're getting one or two as a man, I can understand why you can, you have the time to sit and reply to a message like that. Cause it makes, you, you know what I mean? But when, you're getting one woman, or two fellas, <laughs> we know you're not getting hundreds. <laughs> Don't lie to us. Sorry, all right. Reply back to Cindy. <laughs> okay. Cause Cindy is the only one in your inbox is waiting for a reply. Oh, you can no. reply. Stop playing hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> exactly stop playing you've got time like women don't come into men's inboxes oh like that God. the same way That's but for a woman like there's too many you need to have something that like keeps the conversation because otherwise you just go into the like oh same old inbox and i'm not talking like just even like average women it's the same problem because of the way that men are you so, know so so in this men in, swipe in, on everything women swipe on a few 
<laughs> hey, you telling all kinds of secrets. Uh, so, <laughs> so, 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 in the spirit, in the spirit of like telling women that they should have things in their profile that will, you know, spark conversation, which I think is a powerful thing. I think both should, uh, but it's particularly women, if if the guys are going to be initiating. So, I have uh, one more question from a uh, a listener that is in the realm of what we're talking about. So. Here, I'll show you. Um, what are some things that women think that men care about in relationships that men actually don't care about? How do you feel about that? What, what are some things that I think men think women care about? I think men, women think men care about the things that they care about. Yeah. So, like, a woman wants a man to, like, show up in, in the way that she thinks if you know what i mean no i I think i think the question was what are some things that women think that men care about that they actually that men actually don't care about in terms of like a relationship though right yeah in the context of in the relationships or just anything huh dating relationships anything i think that like women think men really care about like or a certain type of men i should say okay um you know, because they're all different types of men. But I think a lot of women think men really care about, like, them being able to, like, like take care of everything, you know? What do you mean? Like, they kind of, like a lot of women really believe that it makes them really attractive to a man, the fact that she doesn't need anything, mm. you know? I think they think that because there is a source of pride, and I get it, like, you should be proud. Be proud that you've, you know, created a life for yourself in which you're, you, you are okay and you've got things con- like handled. But just understand that that doesn't necessarily increase your worth to a man, a mm. certain type of man. Mm. Like it doesn't make you more attractive just because you've got everything sorted out in your life. Do you know what mm. I mean? Uh, I don't think it does. What I do think is attractive is if he sees somebody with a certain spirit, a spirit of like not necessarily ambition, but a spirit to improve, mm. a spirit to like move towards like being better in various ways, you know? Mm. I don't think it's attractive for anyone for to have a person around you that is just happy to never, ever improve and just sit there. And, you know, that's unattractive. But I think a lot of women place too much of a, of a value on like being able to show up. Like I know, for example, one of my clients, like she told me she would never date a man if she didn't even have like a full-time job doing this and earning this amount of money. If she didn't have a full-time job, she said? She said she wouldn't have, she wouldn't date a man in the past anyway. She wouldn't even consider dating a man if she wasn't in a full-time job earning a certain amount. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) You're laughing. You're laughing. (laughs) But it's her self-worth. Do you know what I mean? And she's thinking that uh, that is something that, like, a man is going to look at her and judge her for. But, the right, like, a certain type of man or the right kind of man for her, that's not something that they would care about. You know what I mean? I think, I think that also depends on what type of dynamic she wants in the relationship yes, also. I know what kind of man she wants. How do you know? Yeah. We don't, we're speaking hypotheticals here. <laughs> no, she, I'm talking about an ex-client of mine. Oh, That's how oh I, know. I got you. I'm sorry. I thought you were speaking in, the, yeah. in general. Oh, yes. No. Okay. I, I feel you. So, so what you're yeah. saying is like some women put a lot of, with, in so many words, a lot of women put emphasis on being fully put together and being able to handle yeah. everything on their own, especially when it comes to their career and, and, and stuff like that. You're saying the emphasis that women put put on that into thinking that a lot of men are putting a lot of value on that. You're saying they, they shouldn't assume that men value that. Yeah. It's not like what I want. And this is where like women get it confused because when you say this, sometimes it puts women's back up because they're feeling as though like what kind of man wouldn't appreciate all the hard work yeah. and the enterprising like nature that I have. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that men do appreciate like good men appreciate a woman that likes wants better for herself in in every way you know Mm. but what I'm trying to say is that like if your character is not up to par then that kind of stuff isn't going to tip the balance in your favor Mm -hmm. like you're not coming across in a way that fosters a good balance in the terms of the polarity between you the masculine feminine Mm. then all that stuff goes out the window Mm. he's not going to 
choose you or value you more because of that stuff if you're not showing up in a way that allows him to feel like the man. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. You know, it, I, I'm very glad you said that because I I have like a, a little bit of a, it's a similar perspective, but in a different way, right? I don't want people to get it misconstrued that women don't, possess any value in achieving these things that are very personal to them and could also be beneficial to their, yeah. their relationship or the family they want to raise. I want to, I want to make sure I, I communicate that, but here's what I'll say. There is value in that, but not for initial introduction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's the opposite for men, right? Mm, exactly. So, so, a woman will look at a man who has a lot of stature, who's put together, who can handle everything. He's like, he is the achiever. He, he does things. He's resourceful, right? He's mm -hmm. whatever. And that is an aphrodisiac to a woman that yes. will turn her on in some capacity. Yes. Like, oh, damn. Oh, look at this. Right. And, yes. and that will allow a man the opportunity to get in the door in a lot of ways. Exactly. Right. But, but, what will keep that man in the relationship are some of the emotional things that he's able to provide. Are you exactly. a good, are you a good lover? Are you a good listener? Are you someone exactly. that who's compassionate? Are you, you have empathy that allows the man to stay in that relationship, mm -hmm. right? For women, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you a woman that you know, he's sexually attracted to, right? He feels like emotionally connected to you guys. He has fun <laughs> hanging out with you. That comes first. And that, that is a turn on for him. And then yes. when in the relationship, it's like, Oh, Oh, she's smart. She's, she's got a good yeah. job. She's, she's like yeah. really like supportive and, 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 and how yeah. she handles herself. And she, it's not like a nuisance. Like she's like a partner. Exactly. They're like, Oh, crap, I could stay in this exactly you see what i mean so exactly. so there's value in both it's just a matter of like how you in, how you introduce and what you introduce when you're first that's meeting right. someone i think that's the difference that's right and that's what i want to communicate a lot of women um they feel they just hear that all oh, men either they want to hear that men don't care at all about what they've accomplished which is not true mm -hmm. you know a good decent like man doesn't want somebody who doesn't have anything going on um but just know that that's no substitute and it cannot replace your character your personality femininity all of that that mm. needs to be there for that to matter mm. you know that's a great that's a great point and everything you said on this episode i'm i'm very appreciative of of all your points of view, just for being able to be so articulate in how you're, I, I can tell you're a good coach because just in, in listening to you, I can sense that you are mindful of the, of so many different perspectives, even though you're very strong in yours. And I, and I value that as well. But I think the fact that like you are able to help people while having such an understanding frame is a very powerful thing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, yes, thank you, thank you for being here. Can you tell people how to get in touch with you for any type of programs you got going certainly. on or anything like that? Certainly, certainly. So it's at That Goddess Energy. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find me across all the platforms on that handle, at That Goddess Energy. Um, I'm not taking on any one-to-one -one clients at the moment, but I will have a uh, course coming out quite soon. So um, just stay in touch with me via my page. Drop me a message if you see me from this podcast. I'm often on there on lives, um, so you can always reach me. Make sure you guys follow her. She is amazing. Do not miss out on this opportunity. Um, she has provided a wealth of knowledge in this conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And if you guys want to follow me, make sure you go to j.damisse -S -S on IG or j underscore damisse -S -S for um, Twitter. Um, for the podcast, it's um, introspect underscore club. And that's for everything. That's for, you know, Patreon. That's for YouTube, you know, everything IG, you name it. Uh, make sure you guys click like, subscribe, and um, comment down below if you had any opposing views 
or any suggestions on how you think this conversation went and how and what you got out of it. And make sure, again, make sure you follow Andrea because she is a wealth of knowledge that you guys can benefit from. Um, and if you guys have any questions that you want answered on the show, similar to the questions we had um, asked on the show, DM me, shoot me a text, send me a voice note, or preferably a video of you asking the question and we will shout you out and make sure we get your question answered. So Andrea, this has been a phenomenal time and I appreciate every hour. Really yeah, it's lovely to have like a, a proper intelligent conversation. So I really appreciate yeah, you bringing it. Yes, me. yes. And we should do this again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, definitely. You All know right. how to find me. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. <laughs>